Ah, uh, variety. Such a beautiful thing. You know, we look at the, my, uh, my wife's closet, you will see that it's such full of variety. It's got so many clothes to pick, so many things to wear. And life is like that, you know? So many different flavors of fruits, so many different colors of flowers, so many different types of organisms. One of the most beautiful things about life, in my opinion, is the great degree of variety that exists between life forms and all of these little living machines living everywhere and going about it in completely different ways, trying to find their way to the chances of survival. Why is there so much variety? We've talked about this in the Evolutionary Theory lecture series in that the whole source of this variety is mutations and evolution. But variety is very important to understand because the biodiversity is what keeps ecosystems healthy, it's what keeps the species more likely to survive. And so let's talk about the importance of variety. So variety comes from the ecosystem that has a lot of different pressures and a lot of different niches or a lot of different places for animals to occupy with this ecosystem. You have, you have producers, you have consumers, you have secondary consumers, higher level predators, you have decomposers. So there's a lot of different roles and within the environment a lot of different uh, ecosystems or a lot of different habitats for different organisms to fulfill each one of these roles. And so if you think about all the different roles that exist in the environment and all the different ways in which animals can live, some can live in hotter environments, some can live in cold environments, and so you have decomposers for each one of those. And there may be some overlap between them, but ultimately each animal is going to have its specific place in the environment since there's so many variations in life or so many different uh, criteria on which each animal can specifically fit. And we talked more about this concept of niche when we did ecology earlier in the year. But since there's such a variety of niches, there's so many places for it to be filled by life and so many different ecosystems around the world, there's going to be a lot of variety. And then if you add to that the fact that the world is always changing throughout the history of time, you can understand that there, those niches will also be changing and the variety is also going to be changing. But the importance of variety for an ecosystem is untold and not mis commonly misunderstood. A lot of people say, you know, oh, let's save some trees here. Let's, you know, yeah, let's build a city, but let's keep a reservation here in a corner. You know, at least 20% of this forest shall be saved for all eternity. When you think about it that way, it's like, oh, that's great. You know, we're saving 20% of the forest. But imagine if you cut 20% of what it was, and now you only have 20 out of 100 trees. Let's put it in perspective. Now, I'll say this a wildfire, and before you cut the trees, that was a one in a hundred chance of a tree to survive, all right? So, in the, in the previous example, you would get at least 100 trees living, and so life would have been destroyed. But if you only have 20 trees left, chances of, of that forest surviving are going to be very, very slow, low. So, as you lower the variety that exists within an ecosystem, you're going to lower the chances of survival or the stability of this ecosystem. You, you cut down the niches. You make less room for animals to exist and coexist with each other and have relationships with each other. And you, you, you cut the availability of resources. And likewise, within a species, if everybody looks the same, one same pressure can destroy them all. You know, one disease could kill all humans if all humans had the same kind of susceptibility to that disease. But luckily, we tend to survive plagues because there's always one or two people which are going to be uh, immune or resistant to that disease and going to be incapable of getting it. For example, even AIDS, there are a certain group of people that have a specific gene which they cannot let them get AIDS. Uh, they can't be contracted. The HIV virus cannot attack the blood cells that they usually attack, the T cells. And so you see the variety preserves the species. It, makes, it increases the chances that this species is going to survive all kinds of different pressure events from the environment. But when you have very little variety, it's going to be very hard for a species to survive different kinds of scenarios. And the same thing is true at the ecosystem level, at the biosphere level even. So variety maintains the quality of life. So it's going to be very, very important. Now, fluctuations in variety, as you see here, all right, exist because different environments are going to be exposed to different kinds of pressure. There's going to be different temperatures. There's going to be different um, humidity levels. There's going to be different amounts of sunlight, different amounts of soil quality. The abiotic factors will change. Also changing will be the biotic factors, different kinds of decomposers, different kinds of predators. All of these things will change the niches that are available for animals in different kinds of ecosystems, and so you're going to lead to a lot of variety across space because of the distances or differentiation that exists in, in, the, in the environment. So there's a close relationship between animals and their environment. But likewise, 
look, there's a lot of variety in, in within a species, even. You know, a lot of people understand that there's a lot of different kinds of tree because there are different types of tree. But do you realize that trees are the same type, are so different from each other? No single tree will branch in the same way. It will have the same amount of leaves. It will have the same quality of leaves, the same quality of roots, the same, everything about them will be different. Although these are all bugs, you see they all look different. And none book, no bug of a particular color has the, the exact same kind of coloration pattern that another bug will have. Some will actually be mutants that mix two kinds of looks. And you have all different kinds of situations in, within a species as well as in between a species. Here's an example of between species variations. Several different kinds of species of slugs and snails all over the place here. You see that although some will be the same species, you can have several different species all living in the same place. And that's, again, variety. Now remember that this variety also changes with time because as the ecosystem changes, uh, the, the types of niches will also change across time. So I just mentioned that before. So you see how these, the frequency of a certain allu in the snails will depend on the area of the city where they live. And also, if you go back and try, try it at a different time, it will be different. Here's more examples of variety across different space. You know, uh, salamanders and other living in different environments in California will have, look completely different from each other because they'll be exposed to different kinds of pressure. All right. Uh, here's an example of variety across time. As as you see, the, the changes in the frequency of alus uh, on a on a, a pair of vole populations over 20 generations, and you see how the alu are actually becoming more or less common because of changing in environmental pressures throughout the time. So you see that changes exist throughout time. Evolution actually happens. You see that fluctuations in the alu frequencies. Here is another example of, of variation across time. Horses evolved from ancient horses that lived in the deserts during the Eocene. And as the weather changed towards the Pli Pliocene and more grasslands actually became more common, larger horses and different kinds of horses actually evolved. But they also evolved based on the structures that were already around on the horses that came before them. But the horses changes as the climates change and as the conditions of the environments change. They adapted over many generations because of changing environmental pressures, leading to uh, greater survival of some that actually had the features that made them more likely to survive. And so that's why there's so much variation. Remember, of course, the variety can occur at many different levels. You can look at that level of, of differentiation or, or differences or similarities at the molecular level, you know, in structures like protein structures, in the domains of the proteins, in the configuration or arrangement or the folding of different proteins. You can see also genetic variation within the DNA code or RNA code. You can also see cellular variety. Remember, there's so many different kinds of cells. There's also different kinds of morphological structures or uh, physiological structures when you look at them. There's variety in behavior or the way the animals act. There's ecological variety in terms of ecosystems. There's variety within species, among species, among clades or groups within the, 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 the tree of life. And there's even variety in the way the variety gets treated by the environment. Sometimes the traits will be adaptive and other times the variety is going to be neutral. Uh, sometimes the, the different looks that exist make absolutely no difference for evolutionary purposes. They're just different because right now the environment is not putting any pressure on, on that particular trait. But if the variety actually gives a, a, an adaptation or a disadvantage, then you're going to see a change in the rate of or uh, the amount of that trait across time. Uh, while a neutral variation will not change across time because it's not being selected for or against. So there's also variation that's not even visible, which we call silent variation, which will be, occur because things like silent mutations, diplody, uh, and other types of advanced genetic relationships like epigenetics, epistasis, and multifactorial traits. Look at epigenetics, for example. That's another reason for variety. Even though we have genetic variety that leads to so many differences, sometimes uh, the environment also causes changes in, in the looks. For example, you see that there are so many different levels of intelligence found in humans uh, in nature. You can also change your skin color even though you were born one way by being exposed to the sunlight. Flowers also respond to varying amounts of sunlight and express different genes. Uh, the rabbit will express or not express the black gene depending on the, core, the temperature of its body. So near the core where it's hot, it will actually stay white on this angora rabbit because it will deactivate the expression of the genes that make the dark color. But its extremities, which are a little colder, 
will actually still have the gene activated, and that's why it, it's going to be black, the color that it's actually supposed to be. So interactions between genes and the environment will lead to even more variety because that will determine which genes actually become expressed from the genetic code that you have. So just because you have genes doesn't mean you're going to be a certain way. The environment determines which genes are active or not, leading to even more variation. Now, all this is going to be very, very important. There's also different kinds of variation in, in terms of whether they have uh, several types or just two types. The majority of things in life are going to be continuous variation, but there are some things which are going to be discontinuous, like either white or a purple flower. Think, for example, like having a regular thumb or a hitchhiker's thumb, having an attached ear lobe or having an unattached ear lobe, having or not having windows speak. You know, being light-handed or being left-handed, being uh, the color and all and the shape and all the other types of traits that Mendel looked like were all discontinuous variation, or in other words, dichotomous, either one or the other. But that's very rare in life. The majority of variety in life, because of different versions of genes, which usually code for for a trait, because genes are usually uh, going to be changed depending on the environment, because of multiple alleles coding for one type of trait, because of multiple uh, genes for each trait and all of these other things you're going to get what you call a continuous variation or a whole spectrum of variation look at skin color eye color hair color height uh, intelligence level it creates like this bell curve or variation when you're going to have some people at one extreme some people at one extreme a lot of people at the middle or so forth and all of these because there's so many different uh, relationships which will cause the actual um, trait to look up uh, traits are much more complex than we realize and because of that there's going to be a lot of variation there's also the concept of geographic variation that you know that's what actually was looked at by Darwin that different uh, looks will be present in different places because the places are going to be very very different the best example of that for example is the is the finches which live in different islands and therefore it had different beaks because in the different islands they had to wear different things uh, the same thing about bugs and other reptiles or this family of armadillos or anteaters or pangolins which live in completely different um, continents with different kinds of climate and they develop differently even though they have shared common ancestors. The, the necks of the turtles living in different islands of the Galapagos which eat different foods and they're going to be different lack, length, length heights with different types of shells as well, all because of the different kinds of pressure. So you see a lot of this geographic variation. And sometimes, remember, because the ecosystems change gradually from one to the other, you never go from like from rainforest to savanna in like a split second. It usually changes gradually from one to the other. And so as the changes become gradual, you sometimes see gradual changes in the animals that occupy the niches along the transition between the ecosystem and the other as well. So that's an interesting thing that, that about variation. In other words, as biomes gradually change from one to the other, and when you look at the world, you will see a smooth transition from one kind of species to another species and then to another species. And you'll see these transitions in the way the species look. We call this a uh, geographical cline uh, or a steady gradual change, which happens sometimes in ecosystems because as the ecosystem gradually changes from one to the other, so do the species.